Hi, I am Ashutosh. Welcome to Fault Lines. Why Gandhi matters? The answer is well known to many of us. Anyone who knows something about the man is aware of the values he preached, practiced, and represents: non-violence, peace, kindness. But these are not uniquely Gandhian values. Gandhi was not the first to preach the message of non-violence and peace. There have been many before him. But what was unique about him that he brought these universal human values to an arena which is ruthless, manipulative, violent politics. Those who came before him and preached peace, love and kindness were mainly spiritual and religious leaders like Jesus or Buddha or at least this is how they have come down to us. It is quite possible that they themselves were much more socially and politically engaged in their own times. but their messages were morphed into something that had more to do with the afterlife than this life so that they appeared less threatening to the powers to be we see this process happening with gandhi as well he has acquired an air of ethereal saint rather than a hard hitting political leader who is struck at the core of power structure so what is gandhi's philosophy the central creed of his philosophy is satyagraha a sanskrit term made of two words Satya and Agra Satya means truth and the word Agra can roughly be translated as to insist thus satyagraha means to insist for truth it is an appeal or exhortation to the oppressor to see and acknowledge the truth of his own being his own existence but what is this truth it is the truth of oneness of humanity the life energy which resides in every human being is one and the same it is the energy which is known as soul or atma in different cultures it is the force which permeates through all of us and binds us in one common thread all differences whether of color religion genders nationalities are only surface differences that we are all one is the truth of our existence justice equality and fairness stems from the acknowledgement and awareness of this truth on the other hand oppression and exploitation is the negation of this truth the oppressor who causes misery and suffering to others lives the lie he not only denies the humanity of those he oppresses but of himself as well he denies the truth of the nature of his existence and thus is excluded from the possibility of growing into his full humanity Violence is wrong and immoral because it's the result of ignorance and therefore even the oppressed while resisting the oppression cannot be violent to the oppressor one must resist the oppression but one must also ensure that the nature of the resistance is non-violent the oppressed cannot choose the path of violence because then he would also deny the truth of his existence and practice the same form of segregation as the oppressor did the end no matter how noble cannot justify the means because there is no end all ends are the beginnings of something else they are the beginnings of just another circle of violence and tyranny if the means by which they are achieved are violent the means have to be noble too to employ violent means to reach the peaceful end is like planting a lemon tree and expecting apples from it Gandhi applied his values in politics in a time when the world was experiencing the worst form of barbarity and savagery. Yes, the time. Remember the time. It was the first half of the 20th century. It was the time of two world wars: nuclear bombs, communism, fascism, mass killings, gas chambers. And in the midst of all this, here was a frail old man leading millions against the mightiest empire the world had ever seen. and the only weapon that he had at his disposal was his truth and he won india became free from the british colonial rule under his leadership some would dispute the claim they would count other factors like world war 2 britain's economic situation its inability to maintain its rule in india and so on all this is true there never is one factor which steers historical events of such monumental scale but there is no denying the fact the people of india were in no mood to have colonial rule anymore and the undisputed leader of the people was gandhi and it was not just india 
Gandhi's ideals and methods were applied afterwards in the other parts of the world as well. Whether it was anti-apartheid movement in South Africa, civil rights movement in the United States, freedom movement in the so-called third world countries or anti-communist movement in Eastern European countries. The non-violent movements have been relatively more successful than those which resorted to violent means. Like any human being, Gandhi was not without his failings. There are many criticisms of Gandhi, some of which are valid and some are exaggerated and unnuanced. But this is just a reminder that a human being, no matter how great, is after all a human being. We are complex and contradictory beings, and the greater their personalities, the more glaring those contradictions appear. Moreover, we are not finished products. We are located in a certain time and milieu which shapes us. And it just so happens that some of us shape the time we live in and the time which is to come. Gandhi is one such colossal personality. He applied the age-old, universally appreciated spiritual tradition to our own complicated world, encrusted with the mechanical rigidity of the industrial world, a world in which the emphasis on atomizing individualism on the one hand and coercive collectivism on the other has made us lose sight of the simple and profound understanding of what it is to be human. If you like the video, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for your time.